With the brand new Riverside editor, creating audio-only content has gotten way faster. Every guest is now color-coded in the transcript and the timeline. You can move segments around and create new chapters, and you can even splice in audio clips wherever you would like, beginning, middle, or end of your Riverside recording. You can even pull in entire episodes you've recorded previously in the Riverside editor. So let's walk through step by step and I'll show you all the powerful tools you now have with the Riverside editor. I can navigate to my Riverside studio and click view recordings to view all the past episodes. Clicking on episode 500, you'll see a few new things here on the recordings page. Number one, we have a new generate AI show notes feature. If I click generate show notes here, in just a few moments, my show notes have now been generated by AI. I'll get an episode summary, which I can use for a video description on YouTube or episode description in my podcast host. I have bullet points, which are key takeaways, and I have potential timestamps for chapters in this podcast. I can hit the copy button here in the upper right and copy these show notes, paste them in a text document, or again with my podcast host or YouTube. Now you may want to edit some of these timestamps and chapters, which we're going to do in the editor. To jump in the New Riverside editor, I'm going to click the purple button in the upper right corner. A few things you'll notice in the New Riverside editor. First, guests are actually color-coded. My name is in purple, William is in teal, and Neil the third guest is here in green. You'll also see those same colors reflected in the timeline if you want to edit via waveform. If I zoom in, you'll actually be able to see who is speaking when by the color-coded sections. Now, starting from the top, we have several magic tools. I can remove all the silences across the recording just by clicking Remove. This way, if there's any dead space across the recording, it's gone in a click, and of course, I can edit it and fine-tune those in and out points later. Now, to edit my audio content, all I have to do is select words, phrases, or paragraphs, and then click Delete, and now that section is actually removed. Just by deleting that text, I've edited the audio of my podcast. You'll see once I delete a phrase or paragraph, it's now hidden from view. If you want to see the sections you've deleted, click the eye icon in the top right, and you'll see all the portions you've removed. Zoom in on the timeline, and you'll see the remove section is grayed out here as well. If I click the eye icon again, it will hide those removed sections so you're just working with the live content. You can also choose to edit the transcript by selecting a word or phrase, click correct, edit the text, and now you've changed the transcript. This will be reflected in the captions that get overlaid as well, or the transcript you download once you're done editing it here. Now, anytime you've deleted content or there's a cut, you'll see a line here. Clicking this line brings up a menu. You can restore the content that was removed, or click Refine Cut, and we'll zoom in on the timeline where this cut was made. I can then click and drag the in and out points of this cut, seeing the audio waveform, and really make precision edits. And now it's precisely how I want it to sound. For every recording, Riverside will also automatically generate chapters based on the transcript and the topics discussed. If you'd like to edit the chapter names, click the three dots next to any chapter down in the timeline, and you can select Rename. Also, by clicking the three dots, you can choose to remove the chapter from the recording, but keep the content underneath. If instead you'd like to delete the audio content included with this chapter, I can choose Delete Content, and now that portion of the recording is gone from this clip we're going to export. Not only that, but you can actually rearrange chapters in order by clicking and dragging them in any order you'd like. That's right, I just reordered my content by clicking and dragging the chapter titles down in the timeline. It's pretty amazing, not gonna lie. Speaking of rearranging by drag and drop, I can also choose to split different sections of the recording down here in the timeline. And if I wanna rearrange these sections, all I have to do is drag and drop and now I'm changing the order of my content. You'll also see chapter names here in the transcript. If I want to move this chapter below or above a certain piece of text, I can click and drag using the four dots on the right, and now I've moved this chapter marker above this section of text. And I can drag that wherever I would like, and it will update it down here in the timeline as well. If I click the three dots in the transcript, I can remove the chapter name or delete the content associated with this chapter here. Once you've added all the chapters and edited your content just how you'd like, and corrected the transcript with any words or phrases, you can copy and paste this edited transcript and timestamps using these three dots at the top. You can download a text version of the transcript, download an SRT format for YouTube, Final Cut, or Premiere. I can copy the entire transcript, with my edits. You'll see here I'll paste it with speaker name and timestamps. And I can also copy the chapters list separately. And when I paste that, I'll get the timestamps and chapter names. This is very helpful, especially if you're uploading to YouTube or a podcast host. Going to your podcast host like Transistor or Buzzsprout, when creating a new episode, there's a section where you can create chapters for your audio content manually. I can paste the timestamps here and my podcast host will create these chapters for my listeners in their podcast apps. Also, when uploading to YouTube, adding these timestamps in the description 
YouTube will create these chapters automatically in your video content as well. Another new feature of the Riverside Editor is adding content from other recordings in your studio or other edited clips. If I click the plus button in the bottom right hand side, I can upload new video or audio content from my computer. This would be helpful if you recorded ads or sponsor breaks and you want to put that audio somewhere in your recording. I'll choose some ads to upload that I recorded separately and you'll see that audio is now added to the end of my recording. You'll see a chapter name is automatically created and I can rename that. Now I can place my sponsor break in the middle of my episode and I've added external audio within this clip that's ready to export. Clicking on that plus button again, I can also choose from a library of media that I've uploaded in the past, video or audio. I can choose edits from other studios that are in my Riverside account or import full recordings that I've done in Riverside. I'm going to import an entire second episode to this clip in Riverside. Maybe this added clip has video, but I want to keep this an audio only recording. If I click the tracks icon, you'll see this track that came in from my other recording. If I click the waveform here, it will remove the video and now I'm back to editing audio only content here in the editor. Any chapters that were in that other recording will be imported here as well. And the transcript from that other recording in your Riverside Studio will automatically be added right after the content you were already editing. If I click here in the transcript in the three dots, I can add chapters to this additional content that I just imported. Also adding content is great for intros and outros if you want to add some intro music. Maybe it's something you've already uploaded before. I'll add that, drag it all the way to the beginning of this clip, and now I've added my podcast intro and I can also add an outro. Once I've edited all my content, moved things around, added chapters, and I'm ready to export, I'll click the share button in the upper right hand corner. I can export an uncompressed WAV file or a compressed MP3 file, which is typically what you would upload to your podcast host. If there's different audio levels across the guests, you can normalize audio, which will make everything the same volume. Click export, and in just a few minutes, you'll have a finished MP3 file ready to upload to your podcast host. If you want to see what the new Riverside editor can do with video content, which is incredible, check out this video above or the link is in the description. And if you have any questions about Riverside, drop a comment below this video. I answer all of those personally. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. We have even more incredible features coming very soon. I can't tell you about them. I wish I could, but you'll be the first to know by subscribing to the channel and seeing the videos as soon as they're posted. And if you want to launch a podcast, but you're not sure where to begin, I have an entire walkthrough that goes step by step. You can check out that video down here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.